name is Magda Castaneda and I'm a certified nephrology nurse and also the owner and instructor at Utopia Health Career Center, which offers a hemodialysis program approved by Bonnet and it's the best program here in Central Florida. I am here today because I want to go through the setup of our machine, of our dialysis machine, and this would be part one from two parts that I'm going to be explaining. So the first thing that I would like to point out is that our machine is right now ready for setup. We've turned on the water, we've connected our acid concentrate bicarb, we've tested, everything is good, and now we're up to the point where we're gonna start setting up our machine, okay? So we got our filter right here, and by the way, I just wanna note that the supplies that I'm gonna be using today, they are reused supplies that we use here in our training school. But all of the supplies, when you get them for the first time, they're gonna come in a sterile package, okay? But just for the purpose of this training, we reuse our supplies. So I have my filter, and in this case, we're gonna be using the F160NR. The way that I know what type of supplies I'm gonna use is because I get it from my flow sheet. So every patient is gonna have a flow sheet. Depending on the company that you work for or you're planning to work for, they're probably gonna have a different, a flow sheet that looks a little different. But in this case, I'm, I have my flow sheet here and it's all written in, in, in handwriting. Most likely you're gonna have something that's printed out from the computer, okay? So I'm looking at my orders and part of my orders say that I'm gonna use the F160NR for the patient that's coming. So now that I'm properly gowned and I have my, my gloves on, at this point, I really, I really don't need a face shield unless there's a policy in your unit that states that you have to wear your face shield at this point. But for the purposes of this training, I am not gonna wear the, the face shield. And I am gonna start setting up the arterial line, then the venous line, and then we're gonna set up the saline line, okay? It depends on where you work. You're probably gonna see this in a different order, but just so you know, the end result is going to be the same always, okay? So I'm gonna start with the arterial line. So here I have my arterial line. The arterial line always has a red clamp and a red clip, okay? It has two ends. The end that has the big clamp, this would be the patient end, and this end is the filter or dialyzer end. If we trace it, here you see this little connector or more lock, and we use it to connect the saline to here. Some people also call it saline teeth. So this rounded piece that you see right here, this is called the pod or POV. The pod has a little line that comes out of it and this line, the tip of it, gets connected to the machine. This is actually for pressure reading of the arterial line. After the pod, we have this huge segment right here and this is called the pump segment. This segment is intended to go inside of our blood pump so it should look something like this but in the inside if we keep on moving we have another thin line here with a clamp and a cap and this would be for heparin this is the heparin line and the other end the rest of it this is the end that goes that it's going to get connected to our dialyzer, okay? So let's start. The first thing I wanna do is that I wanna get some of the lines out of the way, so I am going to place this end, which is the patient end, into the draining bucket. You don't have to pull out the draining bucket, but I wanted to pull it out so that I can show you something. This line, you are going to attach it to the, these little slots that you see here, okay? So you wanna hold those lines right there. You 
don't want these lines to go all the way and touch the button. Normally, we do rinse out these draining buckets, but they're not really disinfected. So it's preferable that the tip of the, the end of the patient line does not touch the bottom of the draining bucket, okay? All this is infection control. So I'm gonna place my bucket back. It, that was just to show you where you're gonna place that line. Now that your patient end is in the draining bucket, now you have a little bit more flexibility to use both of your hands. The next thing that we're gonna do is that we're gonna place the blood pump segment into the blood pump. What you wanna do is, is have the pod on your left hand and you want that pod facing forward, facing you. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna open the little door. You wanna make sure that you have enough room to slide in that line. And if you don't, you can move the pump around like so just by pushing on this start and stop button, okay? So I like to have enough room like that. And now I am going to go ahead and I'm gonna slide in. I'm gonna apply this little handle here. I'm gonna push it down, push down the handle. Get it in there, okay? And now this is gonna thread by itself. You don't need to force it or anything. So just go ahead and press the start and stop button. And it does it by itself. Then this other end, you wanna go ahead and push it in as well. So it should look something like that, okay? Now you wanna go ahead and close the door. And this tip, you're going to connect it to the bottom of your filter. So there you have it. You have your first line, the arterial line. So let's go ahead and do the venous line. We're gonna set up the venous line now. For the venous line, we also have two ends. So one end is the patient end, the one that has the big clamp. This is always the patient end. And this end would be connected to the filter. So this would be my filter end, okay? So if we trace it, we see this long segment over here and we reach what is called the drip chamber. The drip chamber, we use it so that it, it'll catch air. It also can catch some clots in there. Nurses use it to give some medication through this port. Then in, at the filter end, we have the venous pod, okay? And remember, the pods are used for pressure reading. So here we have this line again, and this line is going to be attached to my machine for venous pressure reading. Okay. So the first thing that I want to do with this one is try to place the drip chamber into our air detector slot, which is this right here. I'm going to go ahead and open it. If you notice, there are two circle uh, metals in there. Those are our air detectors. Okay. So this drip chamber is going to go in there. Once we start with the treatment and what we have in here is blood, these two sensors cannot see each other, okay? If the level of the blood of the blood drops, then these sensors can see each other, they're gonna trigger an alarm, and the alarm is gonna tell us that we probably have some air in the system. So the first place that we want to look is here, and it's probably just a matter of rising the level of the blood inside of our drip chamber, okay? But I'll tell you how to rise the level of the blood or saline inside of the drip chamber in a minute. Let's place it in first. A lot of my students were asking me, 
Miss Magda, but it's very difficult to place that drip, drip chamber inside of the air detector slot. And one thing that you can do is just squeeze it a little bit in order to get it in there. Now, don't squeeze it too hard because I'm gonna pull it out for a minute. In the bottom of this, in the bottom, of the drip chamber, you see a little piece sticking out. It looks like a strain. Well, it is a strain. And you don't wanna go ahead and break that out because uh, if then if we have any clots or something in there, they could pass through, okay? So I'm gonna place it back in. So you wanna make sure that the that lip, it has like a lip in the top. It's about um, leveled with the edge of the air detector slot. Okay, so now you want to take the patient in and you want to place it inside of your draining bucket. And then you want to go ahead and you want to connect your filter in onto your filter. I like to kind of twist it counterclockwise so that I, when I connect it, it connects good and it's straight. Okay. Okay. So now after I do that, I want to make sure that the small clamps are closed at this point. So this is closed. This one is closed. Also, let me recheck the arterial lines clamps. This one is closed. At this point, only the smaller clamps should be closed, but the big clamps that are on your, on your draining bucket, those should be open. See, those should be open. Okay, so up to this point, we have the arterial line, we have our filter, and we have our venous line. Now we want to go ahead and connect our saline, our saline and the saline line. So here I have my saline line, okay? My saline line has two clamps, one and two. So one basically is for safety and the other one is for backup, okay? At this point, all you need to close is one. You don't need to close both of them, just close one. But when you start your patient's treatment, you wanna go ahead and have them both closed. So once you close one of your clamps, just go ahead and spike your saline bag. because you're going to prime it when it's connected to the arterial line. So go ahead and remove the cap of your saline line. And this is going to go connected to our lure lock or saline T that I showed you before. Now, by the way, it's important that you use the best aseptic technique possible. And you want to avoid touching the tips of the lines and any tip that you open, you want to avoid touching it. Also, when you are doing this process of connecting the lines and, and saline, you don't wanna be talking as well because any bacteria that we have in our mouth can just slide into one of these tubing. And remember, we're dealing with patient's blood and uh, we don't want any of our patients to get infected with any bacteria, okay? So let's go ahead and move on to our next step. So our next step is to prime the arterial end. And I'm going to go ahead and pull out the arterial line from the draining bucket just so that you know what's gonna happen. 
So what we're going to do now is that we're going to prime this portion of the arterial line or remove all the air. And we do it by opening the saline line right here. And you see this connection? The line is going to prime this. The saline is going to prime this end all the way to the uh, patient end. Now, there's no need to open this cap. Just keep it closed because the saline is going to go through anyways. It's going to pass through anyways. So I am going to cut this, remember this would be inside of your draining bucket, but I'm going to leave it here so that you see what happens. So there you go. So all you need to drain out is a little bit just to make the air go out of this segment. And then your, this actually Normally, it's never pulled out of the draining bucket, but I'm just going to put it back. Okay, so now we want to prime the rest of our line and our filter. And for that, we're going to have to turn on our blood pump because the prior segment, we're using gravity for that. But now we can't use gravity because the lines are going up. So in this case, we're going to have to use our pump so that we can move that saline. So we want to make sure first that our blood speed is at 150. If the number is flashing, that means that the blood pump is off. I'm just going to go ahead and turn it on. That's on. And now I'm gonna go ahead and click Prime. Prime is right there. So what's happening now is that the blood pump is helping me move saline through the lines. And it's going to prime about 300 ml of saline. So I'm just gonna wait until that process happens. It takes about probably like two minutes or so. If you were in the dialysis center, all you need to do is let this one prime and move on to your next machine. Now what we want to do, we want to go ahead and close the blue clamp from the venous line and we're going to come, we're going to connect those two lines together. So at this point, at this point, both of your patient end lines are closed. And what you want to do is that you want to connect them together. To do that, you have to remove one of the caps and then connect it to the other. And you want to do this with your best aseptic technique. And while you do this, please do not talk. process it won't give you any other alarms so I told you before that I was going to show you how to rise the level of the fluid inside of the drip chamber let's go ahead and do that now so if you notice in there you can see that the saline that the saline level is too low so we're gonna go ahead and rise it and the way that we do this is that you are going to open the clamp this little clamp, the port clamp, and then you, you're going to loosen the cap carefully. 
you do, you do not want to remove it completely. You are only just going to loosen it and you will see the level right. So go ahead and pay attention to this area. Open the clamp. by loosening the cap a little bit. Okay. Then you want to make sure that you are tightening the cap and closing your clamp. Closing the clamp. Once you raise the level, then what you want to do is that you want to place the Venus line into the middle clamp. and closing the door. So this is it. This is the end of part one of setting your machine. I hope it helped.